Hello and welcome to another R Labs tutorial. Today we're going to be exploring how to create histograms using the ggplot2 package. Histograms are a really great way to eyeball the data. Are certain values more frequent than others? And is this distribution symmetrical, skewed, or even bimodal? Today we'll be introducing the basics of creating histograms using the object geome-histogram within ggplot2 and then we'll be manipulating certain characteristics of this histogram, like making multiple panels, adding color, and of course, tidying up the graph to make it look pretty. Finally, we'll also introduce how to produce density plots. Initially, there seems to be a lot going on when you produce a ggplot, but it's quite simple when you break it down into the small properties, such as the ggplot object, the layers that you add to this object, and then the global options that you can change. For more information on the specifics of these individual components, please see our other videos on creating box plots and scatter plots using the ggplot2 package. Okay, so let's go ahead and move over to our studio. So today we're going to be using a dataset from Ernest's uh, 2003 paper in Ecology, which looked at the life history characteristics of non-flying mammals. In particular, we're going to plot histograms of the gestation period of different mammal groups. Okay, so download the data from the website given or from the link below. Save this file into a certain directory on your computer and then set the working directory of R to, the, to this directory. Now you can read in using the read.csv function the data just using the data's name without having to type in the directory for a second time. And let's have a look at the columns that we have in this new data frame. We have information about the species names, we have uh, information about mass, gestation period in months, and even litter size, which is the average number of offspring that the species generally produces. I know from previous experience that this data set includes some strange values in some of the continuous variables. The author has used the convention of having minus 999 in the data to fill in cells where there isn't a value. This can be easily excised from our data by, by indexing rows where gestation is greater than zero and mass is greater than zero and litter size is greater than zero. Now we've performed this basic cleaning task, we can go ahead and run the first course histogram. And here you can see that we've got gestation along the, the x and we've got a count along the y. And we can see that for all mammals of our data set, we've got this skewed distribution. Okay, so let's go on and just manipulate one of the simplest characteristics, which is changing the bin size. Here you can see we've made the bin size a little bit smaller than the default setting, and we can, we can play with this to make it smaller or larger as we see fit. Next, we can go ahead and try and subset this plot and produce many, many panels according to the different mammalian orders. To do this, we just add the facet-grid and specify that we want the rows to be according to the order of mal groups, and we're not going to create panels according to the columns. So from this, we can see that there's a lot going on, and we can't quite see this data very clearly, because in some cases, certain orders have a lot of data, whereas other orders are more poorly sampled. To overcome this, we can maybe focus in on the groups that are best sampled. So let's work out which those are. So let's use the x tabs function, and this will give us the sum of observations each mammal order. And we might want to zoom in and focus in on from this the ungulates, carnivores, and rodents. Okay, so to do this, let's create a new data frame where we're interested in just those three orders of mammals. So to do this, we can index our old data frame. We're using the indexing again through using the square brackets and we're going to specify rows that have orders equal to ungulates or, so we're using the conditional statement, carnivores or rodents. And we'll take all the columns for this. We've assigned this new data frame to be called mydata.largeorders. 
so where we have the largest sam samples. And we can now use the same GG code again, but this time pass to a, this subsetted data frame. Okay, and this is starting to look really interesting now. So we can see for ungulates that there's a seemingly symmetrical distribution. For carnivores, there's maybe even a bimodal distribution. And for rodents, potentially we're still getting this skewed, this left skewed distribution. So we can go one further than this, and we can maybe try and investigate why carnivore has uh, this bimodal distribution. To do this, we might want to add another variable uh, to our facet to see if that variable can explain this bimodal distribution. Let's try and see if other factors affect gest gestation period. So to do this, why don't we look at the number of offspring, the litter size. If we're interested in adding this uh, as a new set of panels to our facet, then we should really create a categorical variable of litter size. So why don't we do this for species that have a litter size of one or a litter size of many? To do this, we can use the vectorized function if else. We can call our data and we say if size is greater than one, then we'll return one in litter. And if it's not greater than one, we'll return many in litter. This is then going to return some strings, and we're going to make sure that these strings are set as a factor. Okay, so let's go on and, and view the samples that we have for this 3x2 uh, grid. And we can see automatically, it's, it's a good job we've done this, because there's very few examples where rodents have a litter of one. So we may want to, before we proceed with this, drop out rodents from our visualization and just concentrate on un ungulates and carnivores for litters of many or one. To do this, we'll just take our old, old data frame and exclude rodents from it. Okay, and now we've done all this messy data handling, let's jump back into it and let's create a new histogram GG plot. But this time, we're gonna add in to the facet columns that are sorted by litter size. So as you can see, we've got a two by two panel, and in columns, we have the categorical variable number in litter. So either one in the litter or many in the litter. And if we then zoom in on what's happening in the carnivores, it's really interesting. For a litter of many in carnivores, they take a, a short gestation period of maybe three or four months. Whereas for carnivores with just one in their litter, they seem to take generally much longer gestation period, seven or eight months. Okay, so this is telling a, a really interesting story and we've done this through the use of exploring our data with histograms. But if we wanna go on and make these histograms publication quality, we might wanna start adding in some more specifics to the theme option. We can go in here and start changing the main grids. We can change in the panel background. We can change in the, the size of the text that is displayed on our figure. And although it seems like a lot of code, it's actually really quite simple. We can also go one step further and add some color to our different categories of data. So to do this, I've created a, a vector called my.color. I've given four color values in there that I'm going to assign to each of our four categories. So ungulates that have many in the litter and ungulates that have one in their litter and carnivores that have many or one in the litter. And then at the very end of this, I added one small line of code, which was the scale-fill-manual. And I specified that the values are equal to my color. So I'm passing in this vector that I, I created just prior to running the ggplot code. And I quite like this uh, addition of color because the two red colors show that these data are both from carnivores and the two green colors show that these data are both from ungulates. And the different intensities of color maybe reflect uh, the number of offspring. I'm now gonna talk extremely quickly about an alternative to, to histograms and that is using the density plot. This, instead of giving a count or frequency, will scale the, will scale the y axes of our plot according to the proportion or, or percent that the data is, is distributed. And it'll even 
add a certain smoothing to the figure. So in this case, I've dropped out the facet altogether and I've plotted them all together on one, on one single panel. Whilst this looks quite pretty and is, is initially attractive, some people have some doubts about this, this type of graphing because it seems to be, be in some way hiding the viewer from the real data that's underneath it. Okay, so in conclusion, I've introduced you to the geom-histogram object that we can apply to a ggplot. We've also explored how we can use the facet-grid option in ggplot. Here we can manipulate the argument, with it, which is a kind of formula, where the first input is changing the panels sorted by rows, and the second argument is changing the, the panel construction according to columns. And finally, to sharpen up the figures and make them a little bit more jazzy, we've added many, many small options within the theme function. Thanks for listening to this R Labs tutorial video. If you found this useful, it's possible that you might be interested in our free online Moodle course, or check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel with many interesting playlists about data handling, statistics, and modeling.